All right, Google, I see you're desperate. You don't know what you're gonna do for the next-gen pixels, so you've resulted to just looking at all the criticism you've got on your own platform, and you've come back to the Apple Sheep channel. You've come to me to try to figure out exactly what you need to do in order to turn pixel sales around, in order to get people back on board the pixel train. Aside from me just telling you to stop making hardware entirely and just focus on what you're good at, in today's video, I'm feeling a bit generous, so I'm gonna tell you exactly what I think you guys should do in order to improve the Pixel hardware. A lot of it's simple, and I think a lot of it's gonna take a lot of work, but in the long run, competition is a good thing. I'm very impressed with what OnePlus cranks out, with what Samsung is able to crank out with the Galaxy lineup, and I want to be impressed with the Pixel because that means more competition, more options for everyone to choose from, but you're not doing a great job. So in today's video, Apple Sheep is telling Google what they can do to the Pixel 5 to make it worth it for more people. Let's begin. So it's actually pretty simple. Just put the Apple logo on the back and everyone will suddenly love it. Thanks for watching everyone, have a good day. Aside from that though, there's so many poor choices on Google's part about the launch of their Pixel phones that they have to do a couple of things differently. For one, the timing of the launch. Even though Pixel phones use Snapdragon chips throughout all these years, they always choose to announce their phones right at the end of the Snapdragon's life. So even though the Pixel 4 hasn't even been out very long, the Snapdragon 860 65 has already been announced and is going to be in the next generation Galaxy S11 and it's going to smoke however the 855 performs on the Pixel 4 which means that for the length of the Pixel's existence it's actually shipping with an outdated CPU. The only time it's shipping with a current CPU is that small window between announcement of the Pixel 4 and right before the Galaxy S11 comes out which isn't very long. So there's two solutions you can do for that Google. You can move the release window, take some time, don't release the Pixel 5 in October. Work on it a little bit. Take some extra time to make sure, hey, ultra wide is fun, so you should probably put it on there. Your telephoto is good. People seem impressed with that telephoto lens, so I'm fine with you keeping that. But match what your competitors are doing, okay? Next generation phones are going to be rocking time of flight sensors, 108 megapixel sensors, and of course, they already have ultra wide. So make sure you get an ultra wide in the next one and just wait a few more months. Wait until the Snapdragon 875 5 comes out or whatever they end up calling it and release it around the same time as the Galaxy S11. In fact, Google, you're rich. You make a ton of money off of Google search and Google ads and that kind of thing. Use some of that money to become the first flagship smartphone to ship with the latest Snapdragon chip. If you could outbid Samsung and get that before everybody else, I bet a ton of people would be far more interested in your phone. So that's one solution you can take, but the alternative is probably even more expensive than buying out Snapdragon. Make your own custom CPU. This seems to be going pretty well for Apple, as despite all of Snapdragon's improvement, Apple is still able to retain one of the best ARM CPU makers out there, and even though the iPad Pro is over a year old, it still crushes it compared to a Snapdragon 865. So, designing chips in-house so you know exactly what they're going to be doing, what features and what priorities need to be built into there, I think in the long run you could end up saving some money and potentially having better CPUs than Snapdragon. I feel like you could afford it, Google, so don't just do what everyone else is doing. If you're really trying to make your own version of the iPhone, make your own CPUs. Don't use Qualcomm's. The other thing you should definitely consider is your competition. It feels like for the past few years, the Google Pixel has been directly addressing whatever iPhone came out that year. At every single keynote, they're like, yeah, ha, we still have a headphone jack, or oh, having a dual camera is unnecessary, and ha, we have two cameras on the front. Wait, we don't have two cameras on the front, or ultra wide's fun, but telephoto's more important. You don't have to do everything just about Apple, okay? Your main competition is people considering other Androids. Don't dwell so much on the iPhone. There's a bunch of people that are super happy with iOS and they're not gonna consider switching, but there are people considering your phone that are on OnePlus and Samsung. Look at what they're doing. Who cares if Apple has a notch? That doesn't mean you need one. Look at how Samsung is doing with their camera cutouts and OnePlus with their pop-up cameras. That's your main demographic. Those are Android users and your job of making hardware directly from Google should be making the best possible Android experience possible 
available and that does mean yes having decent specifications do not go backwards year over year with your battery packs especially if you're not designing your own power efficient cpus this means that yeah if one plus comes in at a really low starting price and they have really decent specs you need to match that the one thing you do have over one plus is your camera performance people love your computational photography they love taking pictures with your phones i'm not saying change that you know keep running with it maybe get better with video performance because that appears to be mostly ignored in the past but if you are able to match the specifications of the one plus model then they would have some genuine competition if they knew they could get an all-day battery life that 90 hertz display while also rocking large amounts of storage and ram they would not see too many reasons to go with one plus over you you've got the better camera you've got first party software on your side you don't have to make some type of skin though at this point a lot of other android oems are making better versions of android than you are which goes along with my argument about look at your competition look on youtube and see what people are liking about samsung and oneplus and what they're doing with their software because they really are kind of making android a lot more unique per device so you need to find a way to take the best of both worlds and rock it on your pixel products that way the competition can't have things against you in google honestly i think you're much better at making more affordable budget phones than you are flagships but if you really wanted a good punch in the face to apple i would suggest making your pixel purchases having insanely good deals throw in pixel buds with the pixel 5 it's just in the box now you know that's something apple's never going to do with airpods so if you're willing to bite the bullet and you're willing to take a loss so that you can include wireless headphones with the purchase i guarantee you almost no one is going to complain about no headphone jack because they're getting free wireless headphones with your phone and no one else can provide that so that's in the solution that you're not lowering the prices because i felt like telling google to lower prices was just a bit redundant everybody's done that and we all want pixel phones to just be cheap anyway so if you gotta sell thousand dollar phones google include some pixel buds people would think eh, that's a pretty decent deal if you're getting wireless headphones with the product those are the top things i want google to take consideration in the future realizing that if you're charging premium price points for your phone you have to convince the customer that they're getting a good deal on it including premium accessories would help focusing on android competitors and seeing what they're doing with storage and ram screen to body ratios and minimal notches and camera holes focus on that not so much on what apple's doing because they're not your real competition yeah maybe there's some people that can't decide between the pixel and the iphone but for the most part the iphone user base is solid they're not changing android user base they are considering switching between different brands and if you made something with a solid camera which we know you're good at at a higher price point but includes premium accessories and also made sure you released it at the proper time in the year where the snapdragon chip was faster than ever right when the pixel 5 drops or you start making your own custom arm chips that can outperform snapdragon then i think we would actually have a major player on our hands until then pixel phones gonna remain very small niche that not that many people outside of the youtube YouTube space are even aware of or that interested in let me know what you guys would like to see changed in the google hardware lineup what would you tell google to do to fix the pixel 5 feel free to hit me up on twitter or join our discord and we can talk more about this no need brand over there this is your apple shape here i'll see you in the next one google <laughs>